But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. is good everybody it's your boy mj up in the building welcome back to another weekly dose of the snake trap sessions vlog if this is your first time tapping in do your boy a favor hit that like button drop a comment more importantly hit that subscribe button and then hit that notification bell that way you're on top of every single weekly vlog that i drop right here on the channel and most importantly that way you're on top of every single trap talk with mj podcast that i drop here on every thursday every saturday and more episodes to come in 2022 best believe that speaking of trap talk with mj shout out to my boy eric lee we just had an amazing podcast this past Thursday, all wrapped around the breeding and keeping of super dwarf reticulated pythons. We talked about what he feels like, what the future looks like with reticulated pythons. All important stuff that I feel like all you super dwarf retic keepers or soon to be super dwarf retic keepers need to check out 110%. So shout out to my man, Eric Lee, and then shout out to my boy, Matt Summers, for driving down and handling down the audio and video part of the podcast. He's a real one for sure, so make sure you go give him a follow. But I am so happy for today's episode because I am picking up a heavy ass package from one of the heaviest breeders that I've ever known. Also, what I thought we could go ahead and do today is take a look at clutch number 12, which just hatched out. I want to show you some of the hatchlings I got. And I also want to give a quick shout out to everyone who just bought a snake off me off Mork Market this year, even all my past customers. Mad love and respect to you guys. I still have snakes available, so do me a favor. Go down to the link below and make sure you go get yourself a Christmas present and get yourself some of that exotic cartel protection before it's off the shelf. So shout out to all my customers out there. And let's take a look at clutch number 12. something I've been waiting for for quite a while. As I took a visit to Steven and Desiree's Reptex facility, I had the privilege of seeing Steven's first United States Captain Board and Bread scrub clutch that he had in 2020. And there's a cool story on the snake that I'm getting today on why I'm getting the snake today. And I also feel like there's a truth that needs to be told about Steven Cush, AKA the real scrub king. So we're gonna tap into all of that today. So I hope you guys are ready. Right now, we gotta get our butts over to FedEx so we can get this package and make sure FedEx doesn't pull none of that shady stuff. I'm gonna show you how I get them acclimated because I do have a process. Anytime I get a new snake in the mail, I wanna make sure they're hydrated and I wanna make sure they're all good to go before I put them away inside their quarantine tub. So like I said, let's get our asses over to FedEx. Let's get back in here and let's get these snakes settled in. 
Oh yeah, so speaking of FedEx doing shady stuff, how do you expect my night went last night? Sleepless, hardly slept at all. 5 a.m., I checked the tracking information on the FedEx package, and according to FedEx, the package was never scanned. According to Steven, according to Desiree, they physically dropped off that package and they know that it was actually delivered and dropped off at FedEx. Here we are again, not knowing where a package is at. Steven says, hey, not sure what to say, bubs. Gotta just wait it out. Wait it out. Sure enough, I get this text. Package delivered. Give me my damn snakes, FedEx. What is good everybody? Here we are inside the trap yet again. I have my new shipment right here just behind me. I feel like it's very important that I show you guys my protocol whenever it comes to me receiving a new snake in the mail, no matter what the situation is, right? From my experience, whenever a snake is shipped, even if it's overnight, no matter how quick it is, the snakes come in very dehydrated. So the first thing I like to do personally is I like to get a couple of uh, plastic tubs set aside. I like to get them in there and I like to soak them for at least 15 to 20 minutes. And nine out of 10 times, you watch them chug a bunch of water while they're soaking. We get water in these tubs and then we're gonna get the box open and take a look at this Stephen Kush production. And he sent me a bonus snake which i can't wait to check out as well all right guys so just a little bit of water you know nothing crazy you don't want to put too much water in there you don't want to freak them out but just enough to where if they were to put their head down they could realize that they could get a good drink of water they could go ahead and get hydrated from their long travels but here we go oh my god i waited so long for this all right great packaging by stephen kush Wow, I cannot wait to check these out. Why don't we start with the uh, bonus snake first? So we'll get the bonus snake out of its bag and let's get him inside his tub so we can get him uh, hydrated and acclimated ASAP. I'm drinking. So here we have a male Barneck scrub python. I believe this is a sarong locality if I'm not mistaken. This will be one of my breeder males. That will be going to one of my three Barneck females that I have. This guy's gorgeous, man. Really beautiful, light brown coloration. This is why I like Barnecks, because Barnecks have that like tiger, tiger stripe looking pattern going down their back, and I'm a huge fan of that. That's what made me like Barnecks to begin with. As you can see, this the snake is really enjoying the water right now. Um, I caught it taking a really, really big chug. So this is why it's very important to kind of let them chill in this in water for about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'll let this guy chill a bit longer and then we're gonna look at the actual snake that I'm really excited to see and that's the Steven Kush production. And here we have SK2011. First ever Steven Kush scrub production. He's actually going in shed right now. Like you can see the skin coming off his, uh, hi, you can see the skin coming off his chin. So before I get to reveal the goods right now, I'm gonna let actual MJ go through his shed cycle. That way he can get that skin off. Show you guys what he's really packing. So while they're getting their soak and getting hydrated, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set up their quarantine tubs. I keep my scrub pythons with the green tree pythons and the emerald tree pythons inside the podcast room. So what they'll do is they'll spend a few months in this room right here, making sure they're good before they clear and go into the side of the podcast room. But I'm gonna show you guys real quick how I just set up a simple uh, Barnex Scrub Python uh, tub, their quarantine tub and whatnot, just in case if you guys were ever curious on how you would set up a tub for a Scrub Python. I'll show you how I whip this up real quick. So here we have their quarantine tubs all set up. Very simple stuff, you know, I mean, especially in the beginning when you want to see if anything's wrong with the snake, you want to put like really straightforward uh, setup when it comes to their enclosure. That way you could spot or see anything that isn't 
normal, you know, like if it's a, you know, the way their shit looks, if it way, if it, you know, anything, you know, it just, you want to be able to spot things, right? So here we have them labeled, right? So look at that. Woo! Barnex Scrub Python, United States Captain Born and Bred. For any of you who do not know what USCBB means, United States Captain Born and Bred, Stephen Cush, 2020 Scrub Python Clutch, and this is MJ, snake number 11. I'm going to tell you guys the story on MJ and why I am so happy to finally have him because this goes deeper than a lot of you guys think and we're gonna talk about it man okay yeah. guys somebody is inside his new skin ready to show that fresh paint I present to you first ever produced Stephen Cush Barnett scrub Python this is baby MJ SK2011 What is good buddy? Look at that. Look how dark he is. A United States captive born and bred Barnex scrub python produced by Stephen Cush. Now there's a whole backstory on MJ here. I'm going to tell you the backstory and how the stars aligned and how he's now at the trap going to spend his life with me. What's up buddy? Oh, I am so excited to have this snake. You guys have no idea. All right, guys. So let's get MJ put away and let's talk about the backstory and let's talk about the history of the real scrub king, Stephen Cush. So back when Stephen Cush and I were going back and forth about his progress with this scrub project, the day he finally got eggs on the ground, he sent me a picture of a clutch, okay? It was a big pile of eggs. And just by the look, I guessed that there were, had to be 11 eggs. Uh, Steven guessed that there were 10 eggs. I guess that there are 11. So Steven said, well, all right, if there's 11 eggs, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the 11th egg. So sure enough, as he's pulling the eggs apart, how many eggs does he count? He counts 11 eggs. I am stoked because I'm like, hey, Steven, you, you're a man of your word, right? You said you'll give me the 11th egg. Steven did not man up to his word. He uh, <laughs> I automatically started backtracking and I think he backtracked as soon as the snake came out of the egg even during the whole incubation process of MJ being born he was telling me that egg number 11 was still gonna be mine I don't think he had high hopes of having all 11 eggs hatch out and thrive out and look amazing as they did but guess what they did sure enough here comes baby number 11 out of the egg and he names it baby MJ so I'm like wow he named it baby MJ so this for sure means I'm gonna get it no Steven right then and there said, I'm not gonna sell any of these babies. These babies are gonna stay with me. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sell baby MJ, but I will give him the name. Cool, but I want the snake, Steven. Now I will tell you what, Steven is a man of no cap. This guy does not wear any caps, literally. I made Zoo Dream hats, he did not wear it. I'm telling you right now, the guy lives by his word. This guy, he's somebody who does not try to lie to you, never lies for the, you know, ever. The only time he ever remotely lied is what, what I'm talking about right here for, for the record, okay? But let me finish. As time was going on, I, you know, I, I got to visit the farm a couple times while MJ was born. Every time I held that snake, I made eye contact with that snake, and we would we tell each other, we will, we, we're gonna see each other again. We'll be at the trap. You will be a trap star. And I told Steven that. I put the pressure on him more and more. Sure enough, 2021 comes along, tells me around springtime, you want baby MJ? Oh, do I? Finally got baby MJ, as you guys just saw him right now, the guy's flossing. I, I wanna go get him right now. I, I just, I gotta see him. He's just, he's just one of those special snakes. If you go back and look at any of my vlogs, I don't ever bust out a snake and, and hold it out. And, and carry it. I might have done it maybe once or twice, but I just don't normally do that, okay? This snake is special enough to where I'm gonna bust him out and hold him for the rest of the vlog. But to go back to the story, yes, Steven eventually did cave in. He shot me a price on how much it was gonna cost to get baby MJ over the trap. I made it work, and now here is baby MJ. Dreams can come true, my guys. Steven was very gun-ho about not selling any snakes from the Scrub Python Clutch. But I am lucky enough to call Steven Cush one of my best friends. I'm gonna tell you a little truth about Steven Cush. Steven Cush is somebody who's definitely beyond his years. 
He is an AKA a freak of nature. And I'm not talking about just the way he eats. I'm talking about the way he trains his mind when it comes to knowing the behaviors and the studies of these animals. It's ridiculous. Stephen Kush has been involved with animals since a young, young kid. He decided he wanted to be a full-time ball python breeder at the age of eight. Fast forwarding to his teenage years where he met Forrest Fanning and Forrest Fanning was able to get him to move all his collection and move all his stuff over to Indianapolis to help Reptech grow and help Cold Blooded Cafe run the business. So sure enough, Steven moving over to Indianapolis and helping Cold Blooded Cafe and Reptech get to where they're at right now gives you the true definition of what kind of person Steven Kush is. This man has dreams and aspirations that are beyond anyone else's imagination when it comes to these scrub pythons. I'm only vested and so excited to work with scrub pythons because of Steven Kush. He has broke down so many awesome, fascinating facts about these scrubs, and he's somebody that I always enjoy having on my podcast. Podcast. He's also my co-host on Unfiltered Reptiles Podcast, so we will have more shows together in the near future, um, but I just want to give a special shout out to Stephen Cush. This guy is seriously on a different level on all sorts of things. I'm telling you right now, the guy knows how to hoop, he knows how to work out, he knows how to rap, <laughs> and he knows how to keep some amazing snakes, and that's a fact. So please, if you guys could just do me a favor, go give my man Stephen Cush a follow on Instagram, and if you happen to talk to him, let him know that I said that he is the real and true scrub king of this snake game and that's a fact and i'm not the only one who feels that way there's many of you out there who know that that stephen kush is the real scrub king stephen keep killing it bro again i'm gonna do big things with mj you know that and i gotta say thank you again for the other male who is actually gonna be ready to breed a lot sooner than mj i'm excited to get the scrub python projects rolling in a lot sooner than i thought i would um and this is all possible because of the scrub king stephen kush himself so stephen i love you dude thank you for being my friend i know it's difficult sometimes to be my friend facts but you're my boy, man, and I consider you one of my best friends, so thank you so much. And I also want to give a special shout out to Desiree for honestly taking care of Stephen Kush. She is like the mother of the entire Cold Blooded Cafe, the whole RepTech team. She's Mother Goose. She takes care of all that shit. None of Cold Blooded Cafe or RepTech would even be possible without Desiree Minot. And Desiree, you are a huge piece to our friendship and what we all got going on. We're a huge family. So I want to say special shout out to Desiree. I love you so much. Also, a special shout out to my man Lars, the CEO, the owner of the building. You are my inspiration, Lars, and I'm going to do big things with these snakes, buddy. And I will get you over here in the trap someday. That's all I'm going to have on this week's Snake Trap Sessions vlog. Please do your boy a favor. Like I said, drop a comment, hit that like button. More importantly, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell, and be ready because guess what? We're going live with Billy from Mutation Creation Saturday morning. Yes, it's going down. Me and him are going to talk about some stuff we feel like you breeders should be aware about. So make sure you're tapped in. Make sure you go down to the link, set that reminder. And like I said, coolest reptile podcast in the world. And I will catch you guys next week here on another Snake Trap Sessions vlog. And I'm out. Whoa, MJ, whoa.